And there is a bacteria flagellum. There you go. And it's all assembled. You can see all the parts. And here you can see the list of all the parts. FLG, I think there's a picture here. You no, know, I'll show you a picture in a minute. Uh, there you can see there's actually a photograph through a, uh, a special technique, electron microscopy of the bacterial phage. Uh, bacterial phage, I'm uh, sorry, of the, we have one of bacterial phages too, of the flagella mechanism. So you can see they learn well, how this works and we have been able to produce drawings of the system of the flagellum. And uh, there you can see all the parts. So what the body has to do is say, okay, we need one FLGG. We need 14 FLGH. We need uh, 20 FLGF. It has to make all those parts, and there are thousands of parts. It has to make all those parts. It has to ship them to the job site. It has to be assembled by basically proteins that, by that uh, the enzymes that assemble all these parts so it stays together. You can't just put them next to each other and they stay together. You have to have some type of glue that assembles them. And then when they're all assembled, it works. If it doesn't work, then they have to, because they, they, they have to try to see if it works. If it doesn't work, they have to then fix it. If they can't fix it, they have to disassemble it. And they do that all the time. They basically have proteins that don't work, and they disassemble them, and they recycle them. So bacteria are really very important recyclers. Uh, we ought to take their example and follow their example in recycling. And there you can see the picture and rotation of this uh, propeller, uh, this wire actually, is, works by a flow of protons through an outer ring of protons. A stator, it's got a stator and a rotor. rotor. Stator also contains proteins responsible for switching the direction. It can stop almost instantaneously and reverse. And we get 23 brand new proteins that are required to produce the flagellum. And there are about 70 specified proteins that are needed to function. So it has to have the right number of all of them. If it needs 40 and has 39, you're not going to have a flagellum. It has to have all the right number of every protein and every part before you can assemble it. This shows you indeed how this is built. are other structures. Oh, these are virus structures, so you see how complex they are. Right here, this is a phage, and that looks like a rocket ship. And that's literally what it looks like. It's got a capsid, a collar, a phage tail. It lands on bacteria, it injects its DNA into the bacteria, and destroys the bacteria. So they're called bacteriophages, what they're called. And there's the AIDS virus. And there you can see the AIDS virus is around an infected uh, cell. This is an uh, H9 T cell, T cell. T cell is a major part of the immune system. And it basically affects the effectiveness of the T cells, so the T cells don't do what they're supposed to do. And uh, you can see viruses are fairly simple. They're a protein coat. Inside of them contains the DNA. And there are several kinds of viruses, they're DNA, two kinds of RNA, and so there you go. And then this one is an RNA, a retrovirus, so it has reverse transcriptase, because it has to convert the uh, DNA into RNA, and uh, well, this would be an RNA virus. Yeah, viral RNA, okay. So reverse transcriptase converts the RNA into DNA. And it gets complex, I'm trying to simplify this.